So today I will be reviewing The Real Housewives of New Jersey Season 8 Reunion Part 1. So last night was the reunion part, part one, and we all know this last, this is going to be Siggy's last reunion because she has quit the show. Now, I don't mean to be mean, okay? But I'm kind of glad she's gone. This whole Mar Margaret and Siggy situation, it's just getting on my nerve. It's really getting on my nerve. And it's really making Siggy look crazy. I mean, just the way she's handling everything. On paper, she really does... I understand what's going on. This is what's going on. This is what's really going on. Before she came on the show, Margaret and Siggy were really good friends. And she probably cried on Siggy's shoulder because her kids wouldn't talk to her and probably treated her like a really good friend. She even probably... Uh, Siggy probably even suggested she comes on the show because, you know, who the hell ever heard of Margaret before Housewives of New Jersey? I surely haven't. So, in my head, this is what I think is going on in my head. So, Siggy gets her on the show. She gets a huge paycheck for coming on the show because everybody knows, you know, Bravo pays for you to go on TV. What Siggy probably didn't expect was her friend Margaret to do a full 360 degree turn on her. What I mean by that is like, Siggy probably, I mean, Margaret was probably looking at the dollar signs like, this is a good, easy paycheck. All I have to do is come film parts of my life, only the parts I want to show, and, you know, act as ridiculous as I want to act and I get paid for this. I need more of this. So what she probably thought about doing, what she did was start phasing her good friend out, right? Now, because this is no damn way she unintentionally didn't invite Siggy to the ceremony. No, no, no. She knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. But the problem was, Siggy probably never had anyone do a one, you know, 360 turn on her, you know, like just totally turned her back on her. And she was probably shocked and hurt. I mean, it happens to people all the time. It's just not aired on television. But Siggy doesn't know how to handle being backstabbed. Okay, you can't start crying, you know, you call me soggy, you can't start crying, you can't tell a person, I'm coming after you, I'm going to bring you down, I'm coming after you, I'm Israeli, I'm going to bring you down, that's what we do, who ever thought of fighting like that, no, 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 like, did what? know what kind of advice Loris has given you, but it sure, certainly isn't good advice. I mean, if it was me in that situation, I would have had a whole different game plan. I would have pretended like I didn't know what was going on, right? Not one damn tear would have came from my eyes. I would have acted like I didn't know what's going on. Because you have to go in the back door to get people back. You know, it's all about revenge. I'm pretty good at revenge. You know, I should write a book on it. And what I probably would start doing is I wouldn't tell anyone what was going on. I would I would only go to uh, Margaret's events the last five minutes. You know, you don't want to go. And then I would start going behind her back to everyone else, like she did you, and I would just start dropping little clues. I'd be like, hmm, you know, it's a damn shame that, you know, Margaret's children don't talk to her, you know, after, you know, she left them cold, <laughs> cold bloodedly for another guy. You know, I wonder how that would feel. See, that would be everyone talking. Yeah, you know, she did turn her back on her own children. And she expects them not to feel any kind of way about it. you got to come behind closed doors. you got to get them where it hurts. It's so, it, you know, I hate it. Her weakness is her children. You know, she did turn her back on them. You know, she said it herself. And that's what I would do. But instead, you start crying. You start, you start saying, I'm going to get you back. You know, it, falling on the floor. Doing, you know, this... It, it was best, so I'm kind of glad you're gone. Is that mean? No, it's not mean. I couldn't take one more season of this. Like, Siggy, you need some backstabbing lessons. Mar Margaret was really putting it on strong. She said that she should be in Bellevue. <laughs> the Real Housewives of Bellevue. She was the, always just digging at her, making Siggy overreact as usual, and making Siggy seemed like the crazy one, and she's the same one. But if you look on paper, mm -mm, that damn Margaret is, you know, she's ruthless. You know, there's a reason your children don't talk to you. I'm just saying. I wonder, do you think Dolores is going to come back on the show and now that um, Siggy's gone? Because that was her job, is to be Siggy's, you know, pit bull. But it just 
didn't work. Siggy wasn't strong enough. So now what kind of storyline is Dolores going to have? I mean, you can't just keep talking about letting your ex-husband, you know, run all over you. You know, he already cheated on you. You let him back in the house. Okay, fine. But that's not, that's not going to last a whole season. So I wonder what you're going to do when Siggy's gone. I mean, you could always beat up on Danielle like you tried to during the reunion. But, you know, Danielle really wasn't having it. Now, was she? They tried to bring up... No, Andy was trying to make everyone accountable this season. He was trying to spice up the reunion because, you know, the season was so boring. You know, how many times can we watch Siggy cry? I mean, no offense. But so he was trying his hardest. He was trying to get these women to be real. He brought up Bathroom Gate. Now, we, remember, it was all in the media that Danielle had sex in the bathroom with her fiancé, but they didn't show it on television. So I guess Bravo finally figured out that the season was boring. You know, like a real sleep, right? You know, I used it as my nap time. But so he tried to make it interesting, so they brought up. Sex gate. That's what I'm going to call it. Sex gate. You know, Danielle's always been kind of loose. You're like, no offense. Remember, you know, she's always, you know, she admitted to being a nympho. Remember? But so he tried to bring it up and she did what Siggy was supposed to do. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> and you just blow things off. You just blow things over if you don't want to talk about it. I mean, you, she didn't cry and say, no, it didn't happen, or I had to get, you know, deal with my sexual urge right then and there. She was like, yeah, you happened, you know, but I got permission before it, I did it. Okay. You see, that could have been a whole segment in itself, but, you know, when you admit to it right away, what else is anyone else supposed to say? She even calmed Dolores down, like, what more can you say? Yeah, I did it. Dolores was like, it was inappropriate. And Siggy was like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have done it. No, I, of course you wouldn't have done it. You can't even handle Margaret, let alone a sex scene. You know, no offense. So, you know, I'm just really worried about what's going to happen to Dolores when Siggy's gone. And then there was Melissa. Melissa was the one saying that she genuinely liked Danielle and that she didn't know what the other women were talking about because season one, she's seen what Teresa did to Danielle, but she didn't see it the other way around. She didn't do anything to Danielle. You know, Danielle's behavior on season one was, you know, wasn't the same as this season. I mean, she was, you know, loose, loosey goosey, you know, a little bit. And she just, it was, she was not the same Danielle. So I don't know what the hell Melissa's talking about, but she cleaned it up quick because you can't be team Danielle and not Team Teresa. I always feel like Melissa goes all the way to the edge with her relationship with Teresa, but doesn't let it fall off the cliff because she knows, you know, that's like a dead man walking. This is why the season was really boring. A blind man can see all the tension that goes on between Teresa and Melissa. She said you are only a Gorga by injection. That's a low, you don't say that to your enemy now, do you? But they want us to believe that they're good friends. These two still hate each other. And I'm going to have to blame Teresa on this one. Teresa just, she, she just doesn't like Melissa. She tried, you know, and she'll put on a good show in front of Joe, her brother. But at the end of the day, mm -mm. she says little things behind Teresa's back. I mean, uh, Melissa's back, like, you know, how dare her say, I don't discipline my kids. She's a lie. Mm -mm. These two don't like each other, but they have to fake. They have to fake it for a couple of reasons. One, they're both on the show together. You know, Teresa needs the money. I don't know about Melissa these days. They look to be doing pretty good, but they can't afford to not film together. So that's number one. Two, her brother would have a fit if he found out that how Teresa really felt about her sister. So they keep a cordial, friendly relationship. But who are these two fooling? They're not best friends. They don't even like each other. I mean, there's not really much to talk about this season. Andy tried to make people accountable. He tried to make Teresa tell the truth. You know, okay, so Teresa glosses over things, you know, like, she'll, she'll say, oh, it's no big deal. She only talks about the things that she wants to talk about. I mean, she'll only admit to the things that she wants to talk about. So he was asking her, well, you know, How's everything with you and Joe? Fine, fine. You know, because, you know, rumor has it that, you know, she's cheating on Joe. That's the rumor. He was trying to get it out of her, but, you know, she wouldn't crack. She said everything was okay and that Joe <laughs> learned his lesson. And she said she was even willing to move to Italy. Now, listen, 
damn lie. I just don't see her going, who wants to go to Italy? If you wanted to live in Italy, you would be in Italy. You don't live in Italy. You live in the United States. I don't even believe she, that, that was just a cold face, bold face lie. You know, but I would lie too, under the circumstances, she doesn't know if the new boyfriend's gonna work out or what, or even if Joe's gonna get deported. She's keeping all options open, even though Andy tried to nail her to the cross. It didn't work. He said, Remember last year when you said that um, <laughs> Melissa was uh, was having a hard time getting on the uh, visiting list? You lied to me, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You know, she'll lie in a minute. She just won't tell the truth. I kind of get it. You know, if I was having an affair with my husband, allegedly, you know, I probably wouldn't want to talk about it on national TV without before my husband knows. That just me. So who knows what's going on behind the scenes with Teresa? Because if she doesn't want you to know, she'll lie about it. And I can't even hate on her for that. Now I would do the same thing. Just lie. I mean, learn from Siggy. You know, you got to learn how to be shrewd in this reality TV show world, you know? So there really wasn't too much going on this episode, but everything's gearing up for part two. I'm definitely going to watch part two because Kim D is going to be there and with all the rumors out about Teresa cheating and all the pictures out, I'm hoping that these women really start telling some truths. We'll see. Or is Bravo going to skate over it again? I don't know, but I will be there. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye.